Good day, good day, good day, good day, everyone. Good day. Yes, it's one, it's one p.m. We all know what time it is. It's time for English Home Language for Grade Seven. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Today we are going to have a very different lesson altogether. Yes, it's going to be different. How? So you ask. Um, just keep on being here, and you will see how different today's lesson will be. So thank you so much for joining us. I welcome everyone. Let us quickly take the register. Let us see you right. To, let us see you say hi in the chat. Let's see who is with us today. Let's see who is present. And let us see who is absent. All right, okay. I see a couple of highs in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us today. And like I've said, today's lesson will be very, very different. It will be a listening comprehension. Yeah. So please make sure that your speakers are at a very reasonable, loud enough volume. Make sure that your headsets are working fine, perfectly well. Uh, make sure that where you are, it is quiet enough so that you can be able to enjoy this lesson and get the most out of it. So yes, listening comprehension is what today's lesson will be all about. So what's going to happen is that I am I am going to I'm going to teach you how what to do how how to benefit to the maximum from a listening comprehension exercise and then we are going to have a listening comprehension exercise it's going to be amazing I can't wait I really can't wait for this I cannot wait for it okay without a waste of time let's get started uh, if you're experiencing network problems do not worry I think probably the network will feel sorry for us just for the sake of to this lesson because it really needs the network to really be good. Okay, so with so in today's lesson I like I have already mentioned that it will be a listening comprehension. So the learners listen to the teacher reading a text and then they answer questions based on it. Okay, so yes, that is what I will be doing today. I will read something for you, and then you will, and then I will be expecting you to answer questions based on it. And it will be good for you to, to really pay attention because the questions that which I'm going to ask you, they also have something to do with our lesson for tomorrow. I will tell you what tomorrow's lesson will be about at the end, and it's going to be interesting. And it is also about the one skill that we should really need for you to succeed in life, for you to become the doctor, the teacher, the engineer, the businessman, whatever person that which you want to be, whatever opportunity that which you are looking forward to in the future, uh, most of them will really depend on the skill that which I am going to talk about at the end of the lesson, which we will be doing tomorrow. So today is listening comprehension. So let us let us come back to today listening comprehension so remember yesterday we did punctuation marks the brackets the colon the semicolon as well as the quotation marks i hope everyone is good with that yes so anyway this is what we will be doing i will be telling you i will be teaching you what is a listening comprehension you will also learn about how to complete a listening comprehension I will read a text for you, and then you will be answering the questions I am going to ask you, okay? Yes. So there's a lot to cover into this lesson, so let me get to it without a waste of time. Okay, listening comprehension exercises and assessments, they give an opportunity to teach learners how to listen. So you should know by now that like writing and speaking, listening is also a skill, okay? Listening is also a skill and it is a lifelong skill. Not only do you need it at school, but you also need it in your own life at the moment and also in the future, you will still need it. Then today's quote for today, it says, most people do not listen with the intent to understand 
they listen with the intent to reply. This was said by Stephen R. Covey, who is an author who wrote The Seven Habits of Successful People. So yes, this is a good point that that is what people do and that is said, but we really need to change from that. We really need to listen so that we understand. We do not need to listen so that we reply, okay? We need to listen so that we understand because if you understand after listening, then it will really, then you'll be able to, to, to reply. It will be easier for you to reply because you would be understanding. All right, okay, so listening process and listening strategies. So there are two things which, okay, three things which happens. So we have pre listening. What you do during listening as well as what you do after listening. Okay, so I will go through all these one by one, step by step with you. So remember, if you have a question, please do not hesitate to raise your hand to ask your question. Okay, number one is pre listening. So during pre-listening, I will introduce you, the learners, to the listening situation. So pre-listening allows you to activate your previous knowledge of the topic and to prepare you for listening. So you realize that with pre-listening, it will be me preparing you for, for what I will be reading because chances are I will be reading about something that we should know something about. Okay, we should really make it easy for you. Okay, yes. So... I will do that why by stimulating or activating your background knowledge before you listen, okay? To have you to predict what the text I'm going to read will be about from the title that which I'm going to read. Anyway, the title is how important a question is, okay? So we'll also deal with any vocabulary that you may not understand as a learner. We will also set up a pre-listening question to focus your attention. Because remember, it is easy to listen when you know what you are looking for. Okay, so, so if I tell you that, so if I ask you, when was Nelson Mandela born? And then I read, and then I read for you his, his biography, it will be easier for you because you will have your attention to get the date of his birth. Okay, so I will be doing something like that. And I'll also be preparing you physically. Okay, so it will be good if you have something to write on or to write with a pencil or a paper. Yes. Then number two, I am going to read, okay? So when I read, you as a learner, you'll be questioning yourself, you'll recognize, you'll measure, you'll take notes and you'll interpret, okay? So when I will, so when I read you as the learner, what you will be doing is you will be analyzing what I'm reading, okay? You'll be analyzing what I will be reading, yes. the I'm reading, you will also be thinking about what I will be reading. So if I read to you about a zebra, please do not think about elephants, okay? And you also find the meaning of what I'm reading. Also ask questions of what I'm reading, what it means and stuff like that. And you also make your own predictions. What, what do you think this means? What do you think that means, okay? And you also reflect and evaluate. You, so like you think about what I was reading and make conclusions about it. Okay, then after I have finished up reading, then I am giving, I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask your questions and I'll also ask you my questions. We will talk about what I was reading about. You can review whatever that which you have learned. You may summarize the present. So if you're at school, this is what you will be doing. Okay, this is what you'll have been doing, okay? You analyze and you evaluate what, what you have heard you you see that okay then what you have read which will be new information to you you look at ways of how it fits with what you already know and then you draw conclusions you give your own opinion and you respond critically okay so that's what i will be doing Okay, so now we are here. So in listening comprehension, this is what you are going to do as Elena in a nutshell without, without speaking a lot about it. What you have to do here is, okay, to really see that you understood, you may have to retell the story. Okay, so this is something that you may have to do in class if we were in class. You may also have to 
I recall specific detail in a text. There are some things that the way they are, the way they are so important, you will need to remember them. Okay, there are some things you need to remember them because they are so important from what I will be reading. And that is how it is, and you will see that. All right, so and number three, reflect on values and messages in a text. So here you start to think about what the text was about, your opinions about the text, you know, so yes, you, you think about those things, all right? Then you should also reflect on stereotypes as well as other biases, okay? You know that most texts, they really do have bias. They really do have the stereotype. So you, you really have to open your eyes to be able to identify a stereotype and to be able to identify a bias. The number four, reflect. Okay, okay. I've already said that. Then, okay. In, in a case, in cases of novels or a story or a play, you will discuss the character, the plot and the setting. You know, this is usually what happens that if maybe I was reading a novel to you, then you were going to discuss the character. Also, you are going to discuss the plot and the setting, okay? You, you discuss the characters, how are those characters, you know, who are they? How do they relate with each other? What is the main character? What is the main character doing and everything and all that? You can also discuss the plot, how everything happens in that novel or in that story, as well as the setting of that story. And you know, we are people, so because of that, you will also have to express opinions. You know that, okay, fine, maybe, yes, you are going to express opinions, your, your opinions about what you think about what I was reading to you, okay? I know we all have opinions, and we are all entitled, entitled to our own opinions. Therefore, <clears throat> we are all going to have our own opinions about what I'm going to read to you. And then we're also going to clarify questions, okay? so. If it happens that there's a question I'm going to ask you that which you do not understand, I'm going to clarify it to you. Is there any question now? Is there any question so far? <clears throat> Is there any question? All right, so no questions. Let us move on. We are about to start with our reading. So anyway, this is very important for you to do. So please, please, please remember this. If, this, if, this, if there is a one page of my slide for you to remember, this is the one, okay? To remember not only for this lesson, but also for the next, for us and also for tomorrow's, and also for tomorrow's lesson, yes. Okay, so the first things first is concentrate, okay? Concentrate, if there's anything which will really be a distraction for you, please remove it, get it out of the way right now. Okay, so if maybe you have switched on your TV, but then you have put it on mute and you know that there is something that which you could see, or maybe there will be an advertisement of a pizza, which will really distract you since because it's month end, please, please, please turn off your TV or go to another room. Okay, so anything that which will be a distraction for you, please, please get it out of the way. Okay, put your phone on silent, you know, mute your notifications. Yes, mute, on, mute on your notifications, close your WhatsApp, close your Facebook, your Instagram, or whatever, that which may be a distraction during this time. Why? Because you need to concentrate, and you really need to concentrate. All of your concentration has to be on what you are going to do. Remember, reading, sorry, remember, listening is a skill. Therefore, when you do a skill, you should really give your best into it. So even with this, please, please concentrate, okay? 
Everything which could be a distraction or a stumbling block, please do get it out of the way. Number two, look at your teacher who's reading. Ah, uh, mm, okay. Sorry about that, you cannot look at me. <laughs> Sorry, you cannot look at me, but what, what I'm going to do is, I will just take it back to my title page. So you will just look at my picture there. And when you look at my picture, you can just imagine my mouth as it moves, as if like, yes, because I will be reading by the way. Number three, have a pen and paper handy to write important points. Okay, so you can get a pen right now, a pencil to write the important points that which I may highlight, that which you, that which you may recognize as I'm going to read. Number four, ask yourself what the passage is about and why, okay? Remember, I've told you that what I will be reading, the title is how important a question is. So the comprehension I'll be reading, it is about question is, okay? The reason we are doing this it is because tomorrow I am going to teach you how to fill in a questionnaire. I am going to teach you how to fill in a form, okay? Because it is very important, okay? I mean, next day you are going to grade eight. Therefore, for you to really be able to get there, you really need to be able to fill in a form. Even though you will not be filling in the form yourself, but it will be good that if you can be able to fill in a form, then you can be able to help your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your uncle, your aunt, whoever, who will be helping you to fill in a form. Not only that, very soon you will come to a place where, very soon in the next year or two, you'll come to a place where you need to be able to fill in a form for yourself, okay? Whether it is a form for that soccer team you want to join, a form for that netball team you want to join, a form for a sponsorship, a form for a bursary, a form for whatever it is that we should be filling in a form for. Okay, sometimes it could be a form for a competition. Okay, so that is a very, very important skill. And you can also ask your parents or your older siblings and they will tell you how important filling in a form is, okay? So even I, I really have an experience of working at an office and I've realized that one of the most frustrating things is to see someone who, is in, who has filled a form incorrectly. That is frustrating and, and to some people, it really gets to the point where that form can really get discarded, yeah. Because usually people who work with forms, they work with many papers and too much papers are very frustrating, I must tell you. Cool. So, therefore, we, so therefore we are teaching you to try to, to try to eliminate that possibility that your forms will always be on point. Therefore, that is why I'm saying that you need to pay attention to what I will be reading because it will help you to answer the question for today's lesson. And it will also make it easier for you to learn about filling forms tomorrow in our lesson, okay? All right. Number five, listen to topic sentences and, ex and examples to help you to focus on the most important information, okay? So not every information that we you, you hear is important. Some that just supporting sentences which help to explain something to help you to understand, all right? Okay, so this is what we are going to do for the remainder of the lesson. Number one, myself as your teacher, I am going to read a text to you about the importance of questionnaires. Okay, I'll read it, I'll read that again. Myself as your teacher, I will read a text to you about the importance of questionnaires. So that is what I will be doing. Number two, you need to listen carefully and try to pick out the most important point. Okay, you need to listen carefully and try to pick out the most important points. Number three, the second time, myself as your teacher, I will read the text and then you will take notes. So it, this means that I will be reading two times, okay? Number four, write down some key words and phrases that which you will hear. Number five, myself as your teacher, I will read the questions to you only once and I will expect you to answer them. Are we all ready? Are we all ready? So this is what we are going to do right now. And I am about to start to read, okay? So unfortunately, what I'm reading is not in the slide. So you, so there is no way that which you are going to read with me. I would be the only one who will be reading. What you will be doing would be to listen to what I would be reading.
Okay, are we all ready? All right. Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me clearly? Remember, I believe in voice projection. Hey! Hey! So remember what voice projection does is that it helps to clear your throat so that you can be loud enough, okay? Even, even, even for some of you who are shy, even for those of you who have very, very gentle voices, please use the voice projection. It will help to clear your throat and it helps you to, articul to articulate your voice to be a bit louder and clearer. Okay, now let me read. How important are questionnaires? Questionnaires are documents which are usually divided into different categories or sections. Questionnaires are used to conduct surveys. In a survey, important information is gathered about a particular topic. For example, if you wanted to find out what subjects the learners in the class enjoyed the most, you could design a questionnaire. The questions must be designed very carefully. Creators of questionnaires must consider for whom they are designing their questions. If the questions are clear, people filling in the form will know exactly how to answer the questions. When you complete a questionnaire, you will fill in your name, address, and telephone number. Sometimes this is optional as you may want to remain anonymous. You will then carefully consider each numbered question. You will write down the answer to each question separately. Your answers should be accurate and concise. It is best to use complete sentences when you fill in a questionnaire, but sometimes only one word is required, such as the place where you live. You are often required to tick or cross certain boxes. For example, if you are given certain options, such as male or female, there will be two boxes, one for female and the other for male. You will tick the relevant box. Questionnaires and forms are important documents for finding out, among other things, information about a particular segment of the population. So yes, that is my first reading, okay? I hope you were listening. I hope you are able to get the most important points from that, okay? So now I am going to read for the last time, for the second time, and after that, I am going to read questions for you that which we are going to answer. All right, are you all ready for the second reading? Are we all ready for the second reading? Okay, I see everyone is ready for the second reading, so let's get to it. Hey! Remember voice projection, just for my voice to be loud and clear. How important are questionnaires? Questionnaires are documents which are usually divided into different categories or sections. Questionnaires are used to conduct surveys. In a survey, important information is gathered about a particular topic. For example, if you wanted to find out what subjects the learners in the class enjoyed the most, you could design a questionnaire. The questions must be designed very carefully. Creators of questionnaires must consider for whom they are designing their questions. If the question are clear, people filling in the form will know exactly how to answer the questions. When you complete a questionnaire, you will fill in your name, address, and telephone number. Sometimes this is optional as you may want to remain anonymous. You will then carefully consider each numbered question. You will write down the answer to each question separately. Your answers should be accurate and concise. It is best to use complete sentences when you fill in a questionnaire, but sometimes only one word is required, such as the place where you live. 
you are often required to tick or cross certain boxes. For example, if you are given certain options such as male or female, there will be two boxes, one for female and the other for male. You will tick the relevant box. Questionnaires and forms are important documents for finding out, among other things, information about a particular segment of the population. Okay, so that was my reading. I have read two times and I hope everyone you got to get the key points from my reading. So right now we have eight questions and I'm going to read all of them. Okay, no, 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 not all of them. I'm going to read one question at a time. So I read one question, we answer it, then we go to the next one and we answer it, so, so on and so forth until we are done. Okay, so for, for this exercise, please raise your hand and, and speak because if you text, we will not be able to do all the questions. We only have 19 minutes to do eight questions. So therefore it will be best to raise your hand and talk. Okay, thank you. Question one, what are questionnaires? Question one, what are questionnaires? So if you remember well, that is the first thing I said when I was reading the first sentence I read was defined what a questionnaire is. So question number one, what are questionnaires? What are questionnaires? Someone, anybody to raise a hand in the, to raise a hand so that you can speak. What are questionnaires? What are questionnaires? What are questionnaires? Remember we said it will be it will be best to raise your hand to speak since because we do not have enough time to type in the chat. So what are questionnaires? So what are questionnaires? We cannot go to the next question until the first question is answered. So the first question is what a question is. Okay, so if you're if it happens that your mic is working, you can chat, you can type fast in the chat so that we can be able to finish up. So question one, what a question is? What a question is, what a question is, what a question is. Okay, let's see. We have a hand from Amu. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Amu, I can hear you. How are you? Um, a questionnaire is a document divided into sections used to conduct a service. Used to conduct a survey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amu. It's like it's like you're reading. <laughs> it is like you have the article I was reading right now. <laughs> so yes, Amu, uh, that is correct. A questionnaire is a document which is usually divided into different categories or sections and it is used to conduct surveys, okay? So in the chat we have Angelina saying it is a document divided into sections, yes, which is used to conduct surveys. And okay, so we also have Kanye saying a questionnaire is a set of printed or written questions with a choice of questions, yeah. Yes, Kanye, that is also correct. Thank you, thank you so much for, for answering. Thank you, Angelina, Kanye, and Amo. Thank you. 
Now let's go to the second question. Why do we need questionnaires? Why do we need questionnaires? What is the reason why we need questionnaires? Why do 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 we need questionnaires? Okay, we have Angel Angelina in the chat saying, uh, for finding out important information. Okay, that's good, that's a good answer. Uh, we have Kani saying, to fill out important information. Yes, 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 thank you. Is there any other answer to add to what Kanye and Angelina have said that is correct, yes? So another answer we can say, we need questionnaires to conduct surveys and to gather information, okay? So you realize that a questionnaire is this the only way to conduct a survey, okay? I mean, it will really take you too much time to, to if maybe let's say you want to know what is um, people's favorite brand when it comes to a smartphone, it will be very, very difficult for you to just go to people one by one. Ask this one, what is your favorite smartphone brand? What is your favorite smartphone brand? You know, it's going to be frustrating even. But then if you do a questionnaire, you can just design one questionnaire, make copies and give it to people. And they will just fill it and return and, and return their filled in questionnaires, okay? And we also need questionnaires to gather information. There is some information, you know, it will be easier and quicker to gather it with a survey than if you go to people one by one. I mean, especially now that it is the lockdown, you know, if, I mean, even even with me, if you can walk up to me and you wanted to ask me questions, I'll really be skeptic. I'll really be skeptic. I'll really be reluctant to really participate. Why? Because they say we should maintain our social distance. And then here you are right now trying to get close to me. Here you are right now. I do not know whether you washed your hands or not. I do not know whether you have sanitized, you know, and all that, but you still want to talk to me so close, you see? So therefore, the best way will be Yes, yes, Kanye, you're right. And I also do not know whether you have the COVID-19 virus or not, okay? So then I will really want to do something which will make me to feel safe, okay? Therefore, the safest thing will be for you to write for you to write the survey, okay? To write the survey, type the survey online, advertise it all over social media, and then if it happens that I'm, I'm scrolling on social media and I'm bored or I'm scrolling there and I see your survey, it, the way it is so interesting, then I can fill it in, you know? Yes. So you realize that you realize that a questionnaire then becomes a very good way to gather information. It is the safest way to also gather information, by the way, because chances are if you could come to me now and ask me for, for my name, I may not tell you. If you can ask for my phone number, I will I may not tell you. If you ask me where I'm from, I may not tell you. But then if you can write these questions in a survey, if there could be a question for name a question for place of residence, a question for phone number, chances are I may really give them to you. I may write my name there. I may not write my exact address, but maybe I will write how thing, okay? I may not, you know, and another thing with surveys, it will be good to really have a survey where you can really allow people to fill in the survey without giving out their personal information because that is very sensitive information. Some people have been scammed in the past, therefore they really are not confident anymore with sharing such information. Number three, wh what example of a survey could you conduct that which is mentioned in this passage? So in this passage, they gave an example of a survey. So what example of a survey you could conduct is mentioned in this passage? What what example of a survey did they give in the passage I was reading? Let us see how good you are at listening.
So what is the what is the example of a survey that was given in this passage? Okay, we have Amu in the chat saying, finding information about a particular segment of a population. Yes, that is true. And another example they gave, it says, for example, if you wanted to find out what subject the learners in the class enjoyed the most, you could design a questionnaire, you know? So yeah, that is also another example. Thank you, Amu, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, let's go to the next question now. What two important things must somebody consider when designing a questionnaire? What two things should you consider when you are designing a questionnaire? So what two things must you consider when you design a questionnaire? Okay, we have Sfiso's hand up. As we so you may unmute yourself so that you can speak to us. Sir. Yes. What? Yes. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, the question is about. The question is: What two important things must somebody consider when designing a questionnaire? Hmm. So, if you see so we're about to, we're about to design a questionnaire, what two important things must you consider? Siso, Siso, can you answer the question? Siso, seems like Siso ran away, please come back. Anyway, let's see. Okay, we have people in the chat saying one thing to consider is the people to whom the questionnaire is for. Yes, people, that is correct. That that is correct. When you design a questionnaire, you should think about the people who will be filling out that questionnaire. Okay, so if I am designing a questionnaire for you, grade seven learners, I will be using language for you, grade seven learners. Okay, I will not be using that language that professors and whoever in the university use okay i will use language that which i know that it will be easy and clear for everyone to understand thank you Vipilo. then we have amu saying you will consider making the questions clear yes amu that's correct that's true a, all the questions should be clear okay if a question is not clear it makes it very difficult for people to answer your your question here okay is there any other thing that which you need to consider okay kanye says that you should write a short and a simple questionnaire and make sure that there's not much negative yes you know people really that is something about people that we we really tend to repel or get ourselves away from negative things, from negativity, okay? So yes, this, so it means the things to consider, you should consider the people to which you are writing the questionnaire to, like Bipiro said. Kaohelo says you should not ask for personal information, yeah, because that's very sensitive and people, people when they hear about sensitive personal information, they do not want to share. The first thing which comes to mind is that maybe you want to scam them. Amo says you should consider making your questions clear. That is true. Kanye says that your questions need to be accurate and you should use short and simple questions. Yes, that is true. Thank you so much, 
I'm so proud of you, the way you understand, the way you were listening. This shows that you really were listening. Number five, what information could be optional in a questionnaire? What information could be optional in a questionnaire? What information could be optional in a questionnaire? Okay, Amu says gender and age. Yes, those are very, those are things which are very, very sensitive. And sometimes in a questionnaire, you do not really need them. Okay, if if right now my questionnaire is about you, your favorite brand of a smartphone, it it really doesn't matter. Okay, if it happens that you all like brand number X, then then it's fine. It means that many boys and also many girls they like brand number X. You see, so yes, so yes, I'm more gender and age. Those those things here can be optional. Bipolar says gender. Gender is not usually optional. Sometimes you really need gender. Okay, sometimes you really need gender in some in some questionnaires. But then, okay, gender it gender it will really be dependent on the type of information you are trying to gather. So gender can also fit male or female. Yes, bipolar. That's true. Um, says cell number and the address where they live. Yes, that is true. I mean, your your home address it, it identifies you. Okay, it identifies where you live, and that and if that information gets into the wrong hands, it could be dangerous for you and your family. A cell phone number as well. It's also sensitive. Okay, so it can also be optional. Okay, because you only need information. Okay. I, I only need information. I do not need to know who gave this information. I do not need to call you say, oh, how, hello, how are you? I'm good. So you, so you say you like this phone. You say you like phone number X, not phone number Y. You see? Yes. Amu um, also says where you live, your address as well as your ID number. Can you say your full name as well? So those are, those are things which are very sensitive information, which can really be used against you. You know, when you think of identity theft, when you think of phishing, and things like that. Number six, question six, why do you think people might want to withhold certain information when they fill in a form? Okay, let us make this personal. Why, why would you want to withhold certain information when you fill in a form? I mean, we have already said it. Some information is very sensitive, okay? Therefore, you are withholding such information as a way to protect yourself from any danger, okay? Yes, so yes, yes, like Kanye says, because it is too personal. Amo says, because maybe those people, they may be scammers and they may want to get all the money that which you have in your account. Yeah, okay, so yes, that does make sense. Bipilo says, because it is an invasion of privacy. Kanye says she will be withholding the information because she doesn't want to be a victim of fraud. You know, yes, Kohalo says, she doesn't want them to use her identity. So yes, that is some of the reasons why certain information we do not like to share. Number seven, what two important things must you consider when you write answers to questions on a form? What two important things must you consider when you write answers to questions on a form? Okay, so so the first things to consider when you fill in a form is that you should look at what they want, okay? If, for example, they are asking you to write a, a paragraph to motivate what you wrote, then write a paragraph, okay? Sometimes they will ask you, are you male or female? In that instance, you do not have to write male, you do not have to write female. Usually in such instances, there will be two boxes, one box for male, one box for female. So if you call her, you are a girl, you will tick or cross in the box for female. Okay, Amu, you, if you, Amu, you are a guy, then you are going to cross or tick inside the box for male, you see? Yes, so yes, like Kanye is saying, make sure that you do not write anything out of place. Make sure you do not write anything they didn't ask, okay? So yeah, so if they ask you how old are you, if, if, then, if then you are 16 now, if then, if it happens that now you are 13, but you will be 14 next week, just write 13, okay? Don't say 13, but I will be 14 on the 7th of August. No, they only ask for your age at that time. Therefore, keep it as your age at that time. At that time, you are 13, so write 13. Last question. Name the two different ways 
that you are expected to answer questions on your form. Okay, so the two different ways is writing out a sentence. And number two will be ticking a relevant box. Okay, so do not worry about that. In tomorrow's lesson, I will be teaching you how to fill in a form. So all these things, they will make much more sense to you tomorrow, okay? Unfortunately, we have reached the end of our lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for raising your hands, for asking questions, for answering questions as well. Thank you for being good listeners. Today's lesson has really taught me that you really are good listeners. I could really tell from the way you answered these questions that you really were listening, okay? So like I've said, tomorrow we are going to learn about how to fill in a form. It's going to be exciting. Make sure you have your pen, you know, yes, just in case, you know, just in case. So thank you so much. Remember to stay home and stay safe. If you go somewhere, please wear your mask and remember social distancing. Wash your hands regularly. And let us meet again tomorrow. It's Friday. Woo! Let's meet again tomorrow, same time, same place. From all of us here at STEM Digital School, we love you. Goodbye. Take care. Bye-bye.